Are uh, we... What if the Vision destroyed the Avengers? Plus, what if Wonder Man hadn't died? They should be the other way around. One happens after the other. This is What If Issue 5. Another alternate Avengers mini-epic by Michael Valentine. I am a big fan of seeing Wonder Man's Silver Age costume, the green one... Never been able to work out why something about it tickles me in the right places. Not sexually, I just get a bit of a kick from seeing it. This one has a very interesting question which leads to the second question. It is what if the Avengers character Wonder Man hadn't died and then what repercussions that would have on Avengers history and specifically what it would mean for the Vision who was created using Wonder Man's brain patterns which would never have been created or stored were he not to die in battle alongside the Avengers like with the Galactus Man issue, this is written and penciled by Michael Valentine. Here is our narrator, the big baby in a nappy, in a lame splash image. Our story here mostly spins out of Avengers 9, the first appearance of Wonder Man. One of my favourite Stanley Lee Avengers stories, if not outright my favourite one. And we also have a lot of stuff from Avengers 57, the first appearance of The Vision. We also have a little bit of 52 in there. What we need to know for this first section is that in Avengers 9, the Masters of Evil... Baron Zero, Amanda the Enchanter, and Scorch, they made the super-powered Wonder Man to pose as a hero and infiltrate the Avengers. In the end, Wonder Man turned against the bad guys and redeemed himself by helping the Avengers. He died a hero, and that is how things went for us. But what if he lived? Well, things would go very differently, wouldn't they? He would obviously continue to work with the Avengers. And eventually, instead of Cap's Cookie Quartet, we would have Cap's Cookie Quintet with Wonder Man now there. What happens is... Charlotte Witch earn him fall in love almost as soon as they meet. This irritates and angers the Flash, one of my favourite Marvel characters, who hates Wonder Man for trying to steal his sister away. Not a big fan of... How the Flash is used in this story. But not everything can always be good. We get to see some stuff reimagined with Wonder Man present. Like the team's fight against Atlas Man. Or Mr. Doom. Deciding not to bother trying to fuck with the Avengers because Wonder Man is powerful. And then we have Sword Man. He's going to cheat his way onto the team again. He's going to become a member and he's going to kill... Oh no, wait, he's already dead. I am noticing a trend with Michael Valentine's issues and Sword Man. 
As with a lot of what-ifs, the little things we only get a glimpse of. I want to see them expanded on. I want to see a full story with the Kooky Quintets. I want to see Wonder Man fight Atlas Man. I want to see in more detail all these stories I have already seen, again, but with a slight tweak. There is some aspect here of complete fan fiction. The ongoing theme is that everything would be better if Wonder Man had lived. And Gordon and the Wasps, they would have a long and happy relationship, for example. The only bad thing that really happens, until we get to the vision, is the Flash. He becomes further and further disillusioned and insane over the romance between his sister and Wonder Man. Which brings us to... After Hercules Man declines an offer to join the team because Wonder Man is already strong enough for them. We have Mr. Magnets. This is... Avengers... 49, the storyline where originally it ends with The Flash and Charlotte Witch leaving the team. In this world, we only have The Flash leave. And in this case, he goes full-on villain. He becomes Jim Reaper. And he tries to kill the Avengers. No explanation is provided for what happens to his hand. How his hand is a scythe when he is Jim Reaper. But then, on the very next page, both his arms are fine. He ends up dying, protecting his sister. So at least even this version of The Flash's life... That I find unsatisfying. He gets to go out somewhat redeeming himself. Almost in a similar fashion to how Wonder Man originally did. Then, Charlotte Witch does something that her dead brother would have hated. She marries Wonder Man. That is the first chapter there. I call it Wonder Man fan fiction. It's fine because Wonder Man, as a character, he isn't idealized this way anywhere else. As a one off exploration of a possibility, I'll give it a pass. It's very silly and over the top how certain. Things are somehow better simply because Wonder Man is there. But you won't get much story or character here. At most you have the relationship with Wonder Man and Charlotte Witch. Some hints at Summit you want to see more of. That's about it. Our second chapter is... Surprisingly, far better. And I didn't think I would be saying that. I have read this loads before. And I always remember the first part. I always remember that being the good off. And then get disappointed with where it goes. But fuck that. This second part is the best part. Excellent splash image here. A homage to the cover of Avengers 57. What we need to know now is about the vision. Hank Gordon created an artificial intelligence called Yultron. Yultron turned out to be evil. Yultron then creates a synthetic android called the vision. The vision is sent to kill the Avengers, but 
he has been programmed with the brain patterns of the dead hero known as Wonder Man. It is that human side of him that, much like Wonder Man originally did, makes the Vision turn on his master and join with the heroes. Do androids dream of electric teardrops? So, in this world, much happens the same way. Hank Gordon creates Ultron, who then creates the Vision. But without Wonder Man's brain patterns, Ultron instead uses his own. He effectively transports his brain into the body of the Vision. So now, the Vision is a purely evil Ultron. And what follows is an action-packed Avengers vs. Ultron story. And seeing Wonder Man fight the Vision, always so much fun. And this stuff is very exciting. It is all well done action. And then the Vision slash Ultron, he has defeated the Avengers. I really love this panel of him boasting such over the defeated team. Possibly an allusion to Avengers 161. Things aren't over yet, though, because shit just got real. The big three have arrived to fight Ultron. Captain America, Iron Man, Thor... We do get to see a lot of this action, a lot of this fight. We get to see it, and that is good. But even what we have here, I still want to see more. A lot more. The Avengers fighting Ultron in the Vision's body put me down for an old comic of that fighting. I really love this. This feels like some... Classic Avengering to me. All the Avengers we have here, all the ones taking part in this fight, it feels like classic Avengers to me. Oh, and what makes it even better is that Hank Gordon, he is Ganon to be the one to save the day. You would think that it would be Wonder Man with regards to the first part of the issue, but no, Hank Gordon... He becomes Ant-Man once more. And we have some more fighting here. Something about Ultron in the Vision's body is really exciting. Like, it's showing how effective and lethal and diabolical someone else with the Vision's powers and body could be. So, while they are fighting, Ank Gordon shrinks himself down and goes into the Vision's body and traverses his innards to locate his brain and turn it off or whatever. This sequence being a reference to Avengers 93, where he famously shrank down and went into the Vision's body. And that is our tale of life and love and what it means to be a man in the 20th century. I recommend this. I don't think it is as faultlessly fun as the Galactus Man issue, but it is, especially the second chapter, more than 
just enjoyable. I tell you what, they should have gotten this Michael Valentine guy to write the Avengers. Oh. Well, this is getting seven thumbs up.